MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's head into the deserts of Arizona. We're one of the sharpest uh, MMA cappers in the business. Uh, joins us. Check out his website, gamblue.com. Tons of uh, analysis, free analysis and opinion and picks on the website. And coming soon, keep your eye on the Gamblu MMA app uh, for your mobile device. Gamblu joins us. How you doing, Lou? Doing real well, Gabriel. Uh, you know, we get to talk often on your show, and I just want to let you know how much I appreciate speaking with you and the gentlemen at the Fight Network about UFC fights coming up. It's a, it's a great privilege. Well, I appreciate your time, uh, Lou. That's why we have you on so much. Everyone uh, you know, respects your opinion uh, so much. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not a big app uh, guy. I got a few of them. And most of the apps that I have on my phone are uh, basically uh, for me to place bets. <laughs> like, I gotta be honest, like, I think the only apps I have, I got like three sportsbook apps on my phone, and I've got, uh, I've got the TTC uh, Transit app. Other than that, I don't do a lot of apps, but I'm looking forward to your app. What's your app gonna be about? It, it's, it's basically gonna be uh, an app where you can go for gaming advice and, and specific positions on bets. So it, we'd work ideally with your uh, current apps. We just hope that you would check with us before, although I know you're a, a competent handicapper on your own, but the normal person could go and access uh, all our positions on UFC, et cetera, et cetera, and then uh, be able to take that intelligence and go do something with it. Uh, Gamble with us. I look forward to, to the debut of the app. We'll keep uh, the viewers informed of this uh, in the coming weeks. So let's, uh, let's talk about the UFC on Fox 19, Tampa, Florida. And I'm not just saying this. I mean, you know, people know me. I've been doing this long enough that you guys know me. If a card is eh, I'll say the card's eh. I, you know, I, I give my opinion too much, uh, actually. And I've given my opinion too much over the years. But this card, all I got to say is, holy crap, Lou. Like, you know, like, normally we break this down. I'm like, all right, there's, you know, there's three, four interesting fights. And maybe we'll talk about a fight because, you know, maybe we can bet on it. This card, man... It's freaking stacked from top to bottom. We can't even get to all the all the fights I want to get to. So let's jump right in and just start off at the top uh, here um, with uh, Glover Teixeira and Rashad Evans. Glover Teixeira is a minus 200 favorite. The over-under in this fight is three and a half rounds. Um, shaded to the under, minus 160. Rashad Evans has not won a fight, uh, Lou, since November the 16th, 2013 against Chael Sonnen. And let's be honest, uh, speaking of giving me my opinion, Chael Sonnen rolled over in that fight. He didn't even try. He didn't care. Uh, you know, it, was, it was a cakewalk. Um, you look at Evans, he looked real flat and bad against Ryan Bader. But with that being stated, you know, what, I don't know what to make of this fight. I'm, I, I think Teixeira is the play here. But I'm concerned that maybe Rashad shook off some rust after the Bader fight. What's your take? My take is that uh, I, I would tell you that my suspicions with Teixeira are that he doesn't match up very well to wrestlers. Clearly, John Jones had his way with him, and uh, Phil, the Phil Davis loss sticks out. That said, he just came back uh, over Cummins, but uh, to me this fight boils down to does Rashad Evans return to his roots, which is wrestling, and try and get Glover onto the floor? This, this is a, just like you mentioned, this card is stacked. It's stacked with dynamically great styles. And is that, if Evans stands with Tashira, he's playing him at his game. He's got to be able to go back to wrestling, take him down, and try and squeeze out an ugly couple of rounds worth of win to decision him, in my opinion. Will he be able to do that will be the question. The thing with Teixeira is he's got a good ground game. And secondly, he's got a decent, he's got a decent uh, you know, jiu-jitsu skills, but he's also very good at getting back up if he gets taken down, if he wants to get back up. I completely agree with you, and that's why this fight is a real unknown. I don't know. Is Rashad going to try to wrestle? We often see, Lou, uh, especially guys that are older and in advanced uh, stages that they've been around forever, just because they were a wrestler at Michigan State 15 years ago doesn't mean they're going to try to wrestle now in an octagon. And we've seen this time and time again with guys that with so-called wrestling pedigree don't really use their wrestling in an octagon. 
And let's be honest, you, Rashad Evans has been yeah. one of these guys, even in his prime, he was a stand-up guy. He wasn't really ever a wrestler, per se, in the UFC. Well, the UFC helps uh, try and transition wrestlers to strikers because that's how the pay system is set up. And so, uh, you look, ask Jared Rothschild, although he's no world beater. He, he had a winning record, but they didn't like to see him groping on the ground and making for boring fights. And so I think that's as much why you see wrestlers all of a sudden playing stand-up game because they want to win bonuses and they want the UFC to like them and match them up for exciting fights and bigger paydays. So, you know, you're generally an underdog guy. You don't like really taking favorites. Uh, so are you passing on this one or will you lay the price? Uh, would you lay the price with Tex or are you going to pull the trigger and hope for the best with Rashad? No, I may try and find, you know, I may try and find some inside the distance or go prop. I would try and do something, look at the points handicap to bring Shashira away from a two-to-one favorite. I, I handicapped the thing at about a two-to-one favorite, so there's no real value for me unless I can find some form of angle in the props, I, at least at this juncture. Yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it, minus 200, but ultimately I do think that Shara uh, would win via decision uh, as well. Uh, Dan Henderson and Leona Machida, um, I asked you guys on Twitter, um, actually. We'll get, we'll get the, uh, the final Twitter results of this. Um, you know, we, we asked you guys who you think, and actually the, you know, the viewers of the show actually think Rashad Evans is going to win this fight. On the other side, we're getting a ton of tweets that Leona Machida is the best bet on this card, basically, that Henderson doesn't have a chance. But i got to tell you, for a 45-year-old man, he still packs a lot of power. Just ask Tim Boach about that. And, you know, people have lost, uh, lost money over the years, assuming that Dan Henderson is done. Without being stated... I got to believe the Leona Machida is smart enough not to get tagged by Dan Henderson. He better be because he's going to have to go out there. He has he has what I consider to be a really appropriate style uh, to face Dan because he's so awkward in that karate wide stance. I think it's going to be hard for Dan to get in. This fight is very easy to handicap based on two styles. Leona's going to stick and jab and move and try and take him deep and Dan's going to go straight out in aggressive and try and touch him with that uh, big bomb he throws. The thing is Machida can be knocked out. You know, we've seen this. Um, stop by Romero and uh, stop by Rockhold, but Romero and Rockhold, I mean, you know, these guys, you know, they should just send these two to the Middle East to fight ISIS. You know, they, they can stop anything, these two dudes. So I don't know if that's really fair to, to judge Machida uh, so much. But with that being said, you know, Machida has shown that he can get stretched and he can get knocked out. And Hendo still showed him, but you're right. I think, you know, you look at Tim Boach. Tim Boach is pretty stationary. So Hendo is able to catch Boach. Um, Leona Machida isn't stationary. He's, and he's not going to be. Plus, he's a lefty. Uh, you know, he's going to be a little bit the bigger man. It, 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 it's it's going to be an interesting fight. I loved, I, I faded Dan the last couple times and paid for it uh, and because I do believe he's at the end of his rope. I, I see him on articles saying that, you know, guys on Bellator, the older guys shouldn't be fighting. And I, I, I have nothing but respect for him. He's a true warrior, but I do believe his best days are way, way gone. And he should get out while he's ahead. This, this may be a swan song that Machida gives to him. I, I've been thinking that it should be a swan song for a while, uh, but he gets knocked out and he, he gets back up and he wants to fight again or he wins. But, you know, it's interesting because, you know, and I've been talking about this, he's 45. I mean, Shamrock and Gracie get murdered for this stuff for fighting around 50. As you stated, Hendo's sort of getting up there, but... You know, if Dan Henderson fought uh, Shamrock, he'd kill him. Or if he fought Hoyce Gracie, he'd kill him right now. I think that he can still fight, but it's more disturbing that it that never seems like he wants to end. So I don't know what the end game is here, but I'm never going to tell another man uh, what to do uh, with their life. But our MMA Meltdown poll on Twitter, um, we had, you know, we just did this you know, recently, actually. We threw the question out, so we've got 34 votes. 82% of people... Uh, say Leona, Leona Machida is the play here. Surprisingly enough, we got more votes for the Rashad Evans one. 50-50 right now, complete split in that fight. So let's talk about Rose Namajunas and Tisha Torres in which we got a rematch fight here, but 
the loser of the first fight is favored in the rematch. Rose, minus 215, Lou. Well, now you hit a sweet spot, Gabriel, because I, uh, as every day goes, the price on Tisha Torres, who won the first fight, grows, and she opens 100. Now she's plus 185. It would be an understatement if I told you that it does not have my full attention. And I consider Torres, she, she knows she's fully aware of what she's fighting for. Uh, I think the... Uh, Namajunas had a great past fight. She did a great job uh, in that last win with Van Zandt, who I don't consider to be a very big test. And the fight before that was Angela Hill. So it's the loss to Esparza uh, that I'm looking at. And uh, I'm excited for this fight to come uh, because it's unusual that I would take the older, shorter girl with less reach. But in this fight, I think uh, Tisha Torres is going to be up for the task, and it's going to be hard to get the offer. Yeah, and it's pretty much a championship eliminator uh, fight. As you mentioned, Nama Junis, she looked great against Paige Van Zandt, but Paige was more hype than substance, similar to a, to a Sage Northcutt. Um, yeah, she's got a chip on her shoulder. I think she's you know, one of the best four and two fighters. Um, and it's not often you get a four and two fighter that has as much skill as Rose, but Tisha Torres, as she did in the first fight, and Rose is basically calling her out for it this week, not in a, you know, she's not trying to disrespect her, but she just said, you know, this girl really just tries to win via points, and it's frustrating to fight her, and it's not entertaining, but, you know, if you're Tisha Torres, it's pretty freaking effective. The name of the game is not to get hit and to score as many points as possible, right? You know, it might not be fan-friendly, but getting a woman who knows how to win, knows how to win rounds, and has already beaten an opponent is pretty tempting, but I, I was just wondering... Is Tisha Torres, has she improved? Because it seems like Rose is getting better. I totally agree with that. Uh, Rose is absolutely getting better and evolving. And we're going to find out in this fight if Tisha Torres is. I love the wrestling background and then from that foundation branching into uh, the different specialties of MMA. Uh, I, you know, there's you're getting Torres almost double of what she opened. And what I have experienced lately is that these makers aren't getting poorer at picking at, at setting opening lines. They're getting sharper at doing it. And I just don't believe they've missed this by double. And that's too much value for me to, to take away. And so uh, in the next few days, as we start to dig into this fight further and further, and we approach way in, We'll be looking long and hard to find any reason why we wouldn't be taking Torres, and I'll be surprised if if we find one. I think we're going to be uh, on Tisha Torres in this fight if that number stays 185 or better. You know, it's funny because uh, Rose was the dog against Paige, and everybody, you know, Paige was the hype train, and I think, and I almost fall for this too because I like Rose. Yeah, I'm a fan of hers, and you know, people are like, oh, she destroyed the Paige Van Zandt girl. I think the line will only go up, actually, Lou. I think it's the public, it's a Fox card. As you know, the public bets this on Saturday. I wouldn't be surprised if, if this number goes up and the, and the public bets on, uh, on Rose. So listen, we got to get out of here, Lou, but let's go rapid fire with a couple of fights. Just quick 30 seconds, minute uh, on each type thing here. Great freaking fight, man, with Kiesa and uh, Benel Darius. Darius is on a five-fight win streak, but it's not really true. Um, and I got a lot of respect for Darius. I think he's a great up-and-coming fighter. But he didn't beat Michael Johnson. That was criminal. Michael Johnson got robbed. Uh, Darius got great ground skills. Kies is just such a fuck, uh, freaking grinder. Um, you know, what, what do you make of this fight? Uh, a real interesting fight. Darius about a minus 160 favorite. Totally odd, queer fight. Two lefties. Uh, I'm going to go back and speak out of the other side of my mouth. I like the fact that Kies is way taller. Uh, I like his reach in both his legs as well as in the arms. They're both lefties. And I do think uh, Kiesa is as talented as Darius is. If this thing stays standing, I think Kies, uh, Michael can keep him at the end of his jabs. And if Darius starts to move in, the clinch is going to be too much. So here's a, here's a position in Kiesa that we took at plus 160, and I'm seeing him at, at plus 140 right now. So that doesn't mean he's going to win, but a, a plus money uh, 
position on a, a Michael Chiesa in a fight that's going to be spectacular. Okay, and finally in closing, just like 30 seconds here, Lou, I wanted to get into the Swanson fight. We don't have time for that, unfortunately. But out of all these fights, you brought up to me Rand, Randy Brown and, and the Graves fight. Brown and Graves, kind of a fight that's flying under the radar. So I want to ask you about it because if you want to talk about it, it leads me to believe that you like uh, one side of this fight. Uh, both undefeated fighters, Brown, uh, they found on the looking for a fight. Um, both 1-0 in the UFC. One of them 7-0, the other one's 5-0. What's your take, quickly? Brown, tall, long, Graves, a short, tough, inside wrestler. Uh, Graves opens, probably an appropriate 160. We haven't seen Brown on the ground. Graves is going to get Brown on the ground. And if this fight approaches, it's a pick em right now. There's value on Graves, the wrestler. Gamblu, thanks a lot, Lou. Look forward to the app. Uh, we encourage people to go to gamblu.com for some great insight. Thanks for the time, Lou. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Have a great week. There's a Gamblu uh, with. Uh, sorry, we got a great freaking video, man. <laughs> but for all you Max Holloway fans, great Max Holloway video. We'll come back and uh, wrap things up with a Max Holloway video of the week.